there's I'll one thing that Roland loves, loves. it's kind of getting a little yeah, extra yeah. value out of Tony G. Yeah, yeah. 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 there seems to be something about the two of them. There's going to be some verbal warfare coming up, I believe. At the end of cost, Roland. I like you, Roland. It's okay, buddy. Pass. If I had have hit the flash, I might have won the tournament. Then right? that's that's the other thing. If I won, if I didn't make a mistake. Cool. Cool. And I'm guessing Vicky is kind of happy that she's going to kind of get good. to see what Andy and Roland do before she has to act on her hand most of the time. Um, she's got her eyes on those two players. Like, yeah, they look, yeah, they're they're the ones that um, they're kind of. Uh, not really desperation, but um, they're the ones that need to get some points here. And an interesting flop right here. Vicky might get get herself into trouble here. Wow! Five Actually, thousand. Tom and and uh, Andy both have the the ten. Wow! This this is going to be very interesting. Cool. And and Black is going to slow play this because yep. Duan could have anything, including yep. complete air. Is that the idea? Well, that is. Uh, yeah, there's different ways of playing it. A lot of some players like to fast play the their big hands. Vicky may raise this. Raise to 17. Oh this is going to be God. an interesting hand right here. Very interesting. Vicky is probably done with this hand uh, after she gets action, but um, it's going to be interesting to see what Tom does here and then also <laughs> what Andy does. I just feel, Lynette, that it's a really dangerous raise from Vicky. Even even if uh, Tom raises here, Andy Black is kind of in a tough situation. Oh. Andy uh, is going to have to raise it here, I believe. Yep, right. there he goes. Too many cards out there that could complete some weird draw, and you have to just end yeah. it. I mean, is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's the the, the Jack Nine, the uh, King Jack. There's a lot of uh, well, there's a not there's a lot of draws out there, and uh, he just wants to get the money in right here. I mean, doesn't Vicky have to tell herself, look, Andy called, yeah. and then has I mean. It's come back around yeah. to him. She, her hand yeah. is so dead. Andy yeah. has to have a 10 here, right? Pass. Is there any way Andy no, cannot no. have a 10 Andy here? Andy or Tom. I, 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 could, I can see Tom folding this hand. I think he's good enough to fold this hand. I'll, even though he is very aggressive, this is a situation. This is going to show his true colors. But it is very, very tough to fold. But um, it's pretty... I don't know. It's pretty obvious that Andy does have the 10 here. Andy... Almost can't be making a move, so this would be a very impressive fold by uh, Tom, and I, I think he's capable of making this fold. Wow! That's, if he's given himself a chance to get away from this, that's just yeah. that's ridiculous, isn't it? That's wild. It's th just the way the action happens. It's very hard, but I think uh, if anybody is capable, I think he is. Well, he's taking the chip out. I don't. Uh, looks like he's gonna. Oh, he's thinking twice. It'd be an excellent fold if 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 he can uh, if he can think it through and. Yep, there he wow. goes. There wow. he goes. Wow, <laughs> and that's that is really world class. And from a guy who's as aggressive as Tom, I yep. mean. Eh. The the way the action came down, very very impressive fold. But uh, the way the action came down, he just he just figured it out that uh, Andy. Cannot be making a move there. He has to have a 10, and uh, his three kicker can't be good. So, world class fold there by Tom. I would almost always have three bet ace jack off. I mean, the only reason why I think about calling is like some of the value for ace jack suited. It comes when your opponent misses and bets, or you get those flush draws and whatever. I don't know. It's. Or he C bets on any ace flop, and you have the ace, and you just flat. It's just a spot that's pretty close, really, is what it boils down to. So you can kind of do either way. And I think it's probably most people three bet, but I don't. I think it's fine to call. It's just folding is bad. That's the one you yeah, can't. That's do. the thing you can't do. You know a lot of words. Oh, hello. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, there's just so many words that everyone knows. Wow. Coon wakes up with queens here in little blind, and oh, raise sixteen thousand. Wow. I mean, this this very easily could go all in pre. Well, it's standard. Actually, yeah. anything else would be bad. I mean, oh, wow. he, he's only got fifteen or sixteen okay. bigs. So I, I don't actually hate this play by Coon. Why? I don't know. He's, he's, he's got sixteen big words. I, I sometimes do it too. It's weird. You're in position. You play post. Okay, now it's going all right. But do you think it's because he thought it smelled funny for Coon to min raise off of sixteen bigs? A part of that, part of that is just the range of hands that call you. I mean, you're not loving it with King Jack suited. 
I mean, it's a spot where maybe I call King Jack suited and, and shove King Jack. Like, just kind of oh, mixing my range up that way. I wonder if what Coon's range is for min raising small blind, big blind off of 16 bigs. You know, this is from garbage. It's more likely from what he's been doing when he has weak hands to raise and try and fold or raise and win the pot. And when he has big hands, he likes to see the value of it. Well, I mean, he did min raise, so he's not getting folds a lot. So he definitely has like a reasonable hand. I think Kuhn is folding some out of the small blind there, like yeah. a decent amount. Kuhn is like, couldn't be happier. He just doesn't want to lose his opponent. I mean, the best play here with no draws on the board is definitely just a call. Because if you call here, you're repping, you still might have ace high. You still could have two eights or nines. It's pretty hard to have at least a lot of those hands if you rip it. Right. And so, then the bluffers can get another bet out and a jack can get yeah. another bet out. And you don't, you're not getting beat by much. And oh, he, he's very also, good play. I love right. the play. I think a mistake a lot of players would make here is just Tip to have ripped head. it in. Yeah. And, and with no flush draw on the board, there's just not much you're repping there. And now you just... Uh, he's doing again. well to represent like sevens, eights, and nines he's, here as well. Yeah, right? maybe even ace-king, like ace-queen, yeah. you know? So, I mean, Coleman's really like probably going to bet his hand for value, I, I think. Like, now let's see if Coleman figures out what Kuhn is doing. No, he's gonna bet it, and Kuhn's gonna. Oh, wow. Oh, Coleman is Kuhn the best that has ever pump. lived. Coleman is the greatest that has ever lived. He folds and doesn't even let his that opponent know how strong wow. he was. Wizard beats the back. short stacker. Coleman saving yeah, some King chips. King, King Jack? Oh, wow, it's a beat. <laughs> Kuhn is like, it's damn, how him. did I yep. not double it's up? It's a beat now. for you. So. And actually, you can't blame Kuhn. You can just, you just have to tip. To get through the main event. Back to the featured table now. Three players in a hand. Mike Matasso, Roberto Romanello, and Greg Geller. Matasso with pocket nines. Romanello has pocket jacks. Geller leads them both with two kings. Three big pocket pairs. I smell trouble. Flop now is ace, jack, king. Geller hit his set of kings. Romanello a set of jacks. And that missed Matasso. Set over set. Now I really smell trouble. Matasso does check. Romanello. Owns a fish and chip shop in Wales, and he checks, and Geller checks. Geller should have fired away. Too many draws on that board. Turn card is a 10. Geller still leads with his three kings. But see, someone's got to have Broadway now, don't they? Well, nobody does, but somebody should. Matiso checked it. Romanello now checks it over to Geller, who leads, and he checks. But I got to get a court order to make this guy bet. Another 10 on the river. Geller gets the check mark with kings full. Matiso's lucky he didn't hit that nine. He checks. Romanello now will bet 1,800 with Jack's full. Yeah, bad time for Jack's full. Man, you're right, Lon. Pocket Jacks are impossible to play. <laughs> Geller now, King's full, and the check mark will raise it to 6,000. Well, you know, now Geller's check check looks brilliant. He's got Romanello trapped. Mattis will get out of the way. Now to Romanello, needs 4,200 to call. Just don't raise me. Geller playing games with Romanello. You sure if I pass? Pardon me? You show if I pass? No. One time? No. The only thing preventing Romanello from pushing all in, and I would have yelled out Heidi Ho an hour ago, was that Geller made a big pre-flop raise, so he could have pocket aces or pocket kings. And unless Romanello's going Hollywood on us, he's actually considering mucking his jacks full, which would be an unconscious laydown. I mean, if he lays this down, I'll move to a Franciscan monastery and become head chef. <laughs> Okay, I'll show. Geller trying to move things along. Is he really thinking of folding this? Okay. He does. No way he folds. Yeah, he said he would. Let's okay. go. Fold. You're out. Your hand's dead. Let's go. And shows. Wow. How do you fold that hand? Romanello folds Jack's full. Wow. And that is the player's wow. good instinct moment. <laughs> oh, my God. I could never have folded that hand. Unbelievable. Nice forward. Wow. Okay, I would never have folded that hand. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. I knew I was beat. Last, and you, that is the fold of the tournament when you that fold, I've man, that's ever that's seen. Are there even grocery stores near monasteries? How do I draw tables with people like this? <laughs> I mean, there's 72 million idiots out there, and i got to drop guys laying jacks full down and being right. Romanello may sell fish for a living, but he showed he's not one there.
right, let's get back to our featured table at the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, Adam Jones from Sturgis, South Dakota, which is very close to Deadwood, where Wild Bill Hickok was killed playing poker. Seven deuce of hearts. Wild Bill broke the first rule of poker. Keep your back to the wall. <laughs> Daniel Negreanu with pocket nines. Daniel's going to raise it up to 2,200. Nobody gets a cheap card around here. Peter Antil with pocket fours. I'm sorry, did Adam cool. Jones call with seven deuce? Of uh, hearts. Okay, he's playing Lon McCarran poker. <laughs> There's David Stuck, a truck driver from Erie, Pennsylvania. King 10 offsuit from the big blind. Boy, I would say that's a loose call from the big blind. 1,600 more it cost him. Jones with the raise to him will call 1,600 more to him. Jones calls another bet with seven deuce. Four to the flop. It is deuce, four, six, and two. Got just what he was looking for, a set of fours. Very nice. Stuck checks. He's drawing dead. Over to Adam Jones. Reaching for chips. Picked up a pair of deuces. He puts in 2,800 chips. I know Jones used to ride Bronx for a living, so he can be a little reckless, but are we kidding here? Special with Negrano after him. Daniel's going to raise it. 10,300. 10,300 more. Yeah, Daniel likes the flop. It doesn't seem to threaten his pocket nine. Uncle. Antil calls. Stuck folds. That was a nice smooth call from Antil as Daniel eyed him. Got to tell Daniel something. Oh, Jones gets off the horse. So heads up, Negrano and Antil. Eight of spades, no help for Daniel, who trails big time. And Daniel slows down. Lon, he doesn't just have a sixth sense. I believe he has a seventh and eighth sense. At least. Antil checks also. So Antil will not let him know the strength of his hand. Another eight on the river. Antil earns the check mark. And he's got the full boat. Daniel checks again. Make it 15,000. Make it 15,000 with pocket sixes or pocket fours. Which one is it? <laughs> wow. He's the best. Pocket sixes or pocket fours. Quick. Take your pick. Huh? Take your pick. It's either one. Can't be either one, buddy. Pocket sixes, pocket fours. Which one? He'll break him. But why would you check the turn? You bet the turn, I was just going to fold. I really was. I'm just going to give it to him. I mean, he had to have sixes or fours, but... 15,000. There's a gazillion in there. I'm going to fold the second best hand. He's right. Daniel is the only player at the table, Lon, who has access to the other player's hole cards. <laughs> the amateur had the goods on Daniel, but Negrano was able to get away from that hand and saved himself a lot of chips with that great read. And let's get back to our featured table where Daniel Negrano is front and center. And Negrano with Queen 10 offsuit. I know how badly Daniel wants to win the main event, but I still think he does too many other things. He plays golf. He's got his own blog. He's doing wee bowling. He's scattered. <laughs> he does raise it to 3,000. Over to Ryan McLean with pocket aces. He's another Canadian player. He's from Edmonton. Maybe this is the Canadian's year to win the main event. Ah, a re-raise to 9,000 from the small blind from McLean. So that action back to Daniel now from Toronto. He lives here in Vegas. I don't really want to, but I kind of have to. Well, you didn't have to, Daniel. But he did. He calls. 6,000 more. These two Canadians to the flop. It is 5-4 queen, and that's dangerous. Daniel paired his top card. You see, Daniel hits top paired. He's hopelessly behind. That's why he didn't have to. You know what I think he's got? Aces. <laughs> that is uncanny. <laughs> I think he's got two aces. What do you do if you're McLean now? Well, I'm not even sure McLean has aces, and, and we that's can see his cards. Uh, McLean, a little more than half the pot. That's 12,000 with his aces. <laughs> Well, if Daniel is so sure he has aces, why do he reach for chips? Ace. Yeah, he made the call. Give him an ace over there. Turn card is a deuce. No help to Daniel. McLean checks this time. You know, I think Daniel's talk has frozen McLean. Daniel yeah. talked his way into a free card. There's a five on the river, and that earns McLean the check mark. Why would you check aces on the turn? That was such a strange play. He had a straight turn on everything. <laughs> if I'm McLean and he's got the best hand, I just want to crawl into a hole. It's like Daniel is flashing a spotlight in your face. McLean checks it. Daniel checks it out. <laughs> there you go. Aces. I told you what he had. I had a queen. 
<laughs> wow. Spooky, man. I was like... <laughs> well, Daniel might have lost the pot, but the respect he won by calling the aces is invaluable. Tell me that you love me